because you got a bucket full of fish yeah. over there that we want to talk about. This guy is one of our shiners that we have in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, it is a Tennessee shiner. And when they're in their spawning colors, they do look like um, the Tennessee orange. So they'll wow. turn some brilliant, beautiful colors when they're spawning. And this guy, okay, it is a river chub. Okay, yeah. Um, they have a mouth almost like a trout, but they'll have tubercles on them. This guy has some. They actually will build a nest in the creek just like a bird builds a nest for okay. its eggs. They do the same thing. And it is really cool to see because they actually pick up rocks with their mouth. <laughs> they have to pick up the perfect yep. size rock mm -hmm. and then they'll put it where they think is the best spot and they'll build this mound. And then all these other fish species will come in and spawn on that nest too. The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. Thanks for tuning in. we got a great show lined up for you today. Mr. Matt Cameron has... Uh, Helping me co-host and welcome me in here to his office uh, in Morristown in front of the Holston General Store. Matt? Right here in the Region 4 office. So, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Mountain Country, East Tennessee. We've done a series of shows here and we're excited to have Miss Sally Petrie with us today. She uh, came back uh, came back in the in the room here and there's fish jumping around <laughs> <laughs> she's brought some uh, critters with her today for us to check out some okay. fish uh, from some of the streams around the area that you could go catch or see or and it's gonna be a fun conversation yeah it is she has a lot of knowledge and fun ways to identify them so it should be educational <laughs> yeah hopefully there'll be some fish that a lot of people have never seen before there you so. go there you go well uh, Sally you've been on the show before but introduce yourself to the folks who don't know you and haven't seen that episode but uh, okay. let us know who you are and kind of what you do for the agency sure um so i am a fisheries biologist i work in the pull your, pull your mic on up a little oh, bit there. okay yeah <laughs> perfect okay um i'm a fish biologist i work um predominantly on streams and rivers with uh, game fish and non-game fish so things that you'll catch and then Things that you, again, probably won't ever see. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. And uh, We were talking before the show, what's uh, what's your major, what's your title, what's your role? And she's like, ah, oh, fisheries biologist. But it's more than that. It's it's specific to streams and yep. rivers. And, yeah. And uh, so it's pretty cool. It's a, it's a cool area to be in. Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, and, and you're not originally from Tennessee, right? <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. I grew up um, in Pennsylvania. I went to school in North Carolina at NC State and go Wolfpack. All right. Uh, and then I fell in love with the West, moved uh, to Arizona to do some my master's degree at the University of Arizona and worked for the state agent there, agency there for mm -hmm. a while and fell in love with fishing and hunting there, but missed my family here. So yeah. I moved back east. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Hunting. Uh, have you been hunting this this past year since we've talked last yeah so i haven't been deer hunting yet this year um but i did every year i go back um to arizona with a i meet up with a, a friend of mine michelle um and we hunt javelina which are a little pig looking thing <laughs> that are native to arizona <laughs> they're not anything that people you know normally would hunt trophy wise or anything like that but it's a fun way for us to keep our friendship together and um keep getting outside and, and enjoying the outdoors so that's that's cool yeah we thought it was a uh, motor oil yeah <laughs> Havelina, Valvelina, something yeah. so yeah it's a hog they're, looking critter huh? yeah yeah they're fun to um they're fun to hunt because they kind of hang out in groups uh, okay. they don't see very well so um and when you when you shoot at one they kind of uh they kind of run whichever way they're pointing so they could run right at you really? <laughs> so okay. it's it's fun to hunt with multiple people too <laughs> so just while we're on that topic what's how do you what's the regulation can you keep so many or mm. do you eat them and yeah uh that's a that's a good question <laughs> yeah. i get that a lot uh you have to put in for a tag just like a, any big game species in, okay. in arizona um and then you get one so really? and, and yeah yeah and i we love i love eating them mm -hmm. so um there's a, a oil gland or a scent sack or something like that on their back um when you 
when you skin it out, you just have to watch out for that mm -hmm. and change your gloves when you're uh, dealing with them from the hide to the meat. Right. But as long as you are clean, they taste really good. I made, I invited a whole bunch of fisheries or some, some folks over and we had javelina barbecue one night and they wow. didn't know the difference. So. I was going to ask you, is <laughs> it, you, do you smoke it like you would a pig? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've never done that. I kind of just make barbecue or I yeah. did javelina tacos. I convinced my mom one, one day to have tacos and she's like, wait, what is this? <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. All right. Well, today, I don't want to run out of time because you got a bucket full of fish yeah. over there that we want to talk about. Uh, some of the common <laughs> fish that you would find here yeah. in this area. Yeah. And you said you've already quizzed Matt on some of the names. We'll see yeah. if he can get them right. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. I'm in trouble. He pulled out a scientific name. I was like, oh, man, he, he's got it down. Just not just a common. <laughs> out of one out of 300, we probably had to yeah. learn, I remember. Yeah. And I don't know why I remember the one. But. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's a good eating fish. Uh, maybe so. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even spell ichthyology, but yeah. I don't know we if went I through it in college. Yeah. It's been a while. Almost <laughs> yeah. 20 years for me. <laughs> I know. Goodness gracious. I know. Uh, well, let's jump into it. What's one of the first fish you want to show okay. us? And yeah, well, we'll get to the one that, uh, that Matt was able to ID. And uh, it is something that, it's a game fish. So okay. a lot of people will see, um, and some of these are a little bit... Uh, non-cooperative but this is a rock bass the one that's kind of uh swimming around in there people will call them red eye bass it's yeah. a rock it's a rock bass and um, these are found under root wads if you were going to fish for them you'd you'd fish for them kind of in a in a pool with root wad ro root wad that's yeah. hard to say uh -huh. or a um or some rocks obviously rock bass so yeah. um and they're really long-lived uh fish <laughs> he's trying to hide <laughs> that, that fish you thought was maybe three or four years old yeah. look how yes. small it is it yeah surprised me. yeah yeah they they live a long time and they're really slow growing um so they can be indicators of um good stream health if you get some really big ones that means they've survived for a while so yeah well, that's awesome yeah. i love to catch those those are fun fun fish to yeah. catch they fight too yes yeah, yeah. oh sh get sure some light tackle and mm-hmm Go after them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, I'll, I'll be smallmouth bass fishing on some of the, the rivers, like the Powell and the Clinch and things like that. And we'll, we'll commonly catch rock bass while we're doing that. So awesome. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. What's the little guy in there? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. Is that bait? <laughs> Is that bait? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's hard to see that guy. And this guy is one of our shiners that we have in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. um, it is a... Tennessee shiner and it's going to be hard Ooh. probably for the camera to pick it up but right, that's fine yeah. it sings um, rocky top yeah <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. okay <laughs> um they don't sing rocky top oh. but they do when they're in their spawning colors they do look like um the Tennessee orange so they'll wow. turn some brilliant beautiful colors when they're spawning um and hopefully we can get some video to you guys to show everyone oh yeah um, that'd be great but they'll uh there'll be a whole um there'll be a whole ball of this orange in the stream. And sometimes I get questions from anglers. What are these orange fish or these red ball of mm -hmm. orange fish in the stream? It's not in the salmon, springtime? right? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, they're still little. <laughs> um, but they're, they're those Tennessee um, shiners and some other shiners. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Tennessee shine. Sounds like moonshine, doesn't yeah. it? Huh. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Maybe that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> fish was orange. Yeah, yeah. I swear I saw something orange. Yeah. No, that's what you no. Oh. All right, what's next? Uh, oh, that's a good question. You had some bigger ones I in know, there. I do. I do have some big when ones. When I say bigger ones, they were big for, their, for yeah. the bucket, I guess, man. Yeah, okay. Oh, here they, they are. are. Okay, let me, let me close this up before I dump it out in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is so, a show you need to go watch. If you're, if you're yeah. listening, go tune us in. Yeah, yes. So, on, uh, let's see. I got two different species of fish here, and um, the one on the bottom, and I might have to pull it out, but the one on the bottom, some people call it a horny head. Um, it's a stone roller, mm. and these guys are actually really cool. Um, uh, should I pull it out? Will you, you guys be able to see it? We could try. We'll try it. Okay. He's pretty cr pretty uh, jumpy there. <laughs> uh, right. um, but when I ID fish. So I look at the mouths a lot. Uh -huh. um, and this is a good bait fish. So if you want to fish for smallmouth bass, um, go f go use some of these uh, okay. stone rollers. But uh, their mouth parts are really unique in that um, it faces down and it has a cartilaginous ridge as its bottom jaw. Um, so I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Yeah, I can yeah, kind of see. See that mm -hmm. cartilaginous ridge? Uh, and so he uses that, or it uses that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
to scrape algae off the rock. So it's an it's an herbivore. Okay. Um, but uh, you use those those guys to catch smallmouth. Interesting. Good. All right. Um, hey, remind people about bait and things like that. You don't want to move bait, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's not move bait. So when you're fishing for smallmouth in that area, use the yeah. fish you caught from that area. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's very important not to move bait because you don't ever know what you're moving. Yes, I I completely agree. That's good. Thank you. Um, so those were horny heads or central stone rollers. They will they were called horny heads because they get um, these tubercles or these bony structures on their heads and yeah. actually the whole rest of their body when they're spawning. And they look really cool. Bikey thing, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They look cool. Um, and this guy, okay, so this guy kind of sits on the bottom. Um, I don't know if you can tell. I'll pull him out too. But he has a downward facing mouth. So he's another fish that is going to um, eat something off the bottom. And it is a. Um, what we call, well, what the locals call a box head, but it is a northern hog sucker. Whoop. <laughs> Slippery little sucker. Yeah. Too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So see, uh, whoop. So I don't know if the camera can zoom in and yeah, see its yeah, mouth, for you. but yeah, so you can oh, see wow, its yeah. <laughs> see its mouth parts there. Um, he likes to eat worms and stuff right off the bottom, and he sits kind of flat. Or if he'll sit, oh, it'll yeah. sit flat in your hand, unlike a lot of other fish species. Oh, cool. So those are really neat. They'll get um, they'll get decent sizes. Mm -hmm. So they'll get um, like I, I've seen them in the Cherokee tailwater. They're um, pretty big. So they're so not just in small fit, small streams. Probably not going to catch these on a rod and reel, right? Uh, no, <laughs> not most of the time. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let's see. There's some other big fish in here. Maybe you, you haven't quizzed Matt on the names oh. yet. Oh no, oh. you had to bring that up. <laughs> But they did come uh, from Cosby Creek, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, they came from Cosby Creek. So did you find them this morning? I did. We awesome. were doing another outreach event this morning um, with um, a group of pastors, actually. Okay. Um, yeah. They were kind of looking at, they were fly fishing and wanted to know what was in the river and to see, you know, the whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So we went out. Um, this is uh, another fish people call horny heads as well because they get the tubercles on them. Um, um, that but may be what my son caught one time. Yes, That's you what I was will. About. You yeah. will catch them. So they don't have the downward facing mouth. It is a river chub. Okay. Um, yeah. They have a mouth almost like a trout, but they'll have tubercles on them. This guy has some um, on him, and these are really neat. Um, <laughs> they're jumping. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, they're jumping. Uh, they're almost like maybe a what we call like a keystone species in our stream. So. Um, uh, they they actually will build a nest in the creek, just like um, just like a bird builds a nest for okay. its eggs. They do the same thing, and it is really cool to see because they actually pick up rocks with their mouth. Uh, they have to pick up the perfect yep. size rock, mm -hmm. and then they'll put it where they think is the best spot, and they'll build this mound. Uh, and it's really really cool to see. I have some really neat video um, of this. Does the male or the female or both Ooh, participate in the nest I, uh, I'm not sure. I should probably know that, um, but I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's the male. Uh, but So um, they build this big old mound, and uh, this is where those Tennessee shiners will come in as well. Hmm. So they're building the mound. They're doing all the work, the river mm -hmm. tubs are. And then all these other fish species will come in and spawn on that nest too. So if we don't have these, I'm curious to know what... <laughs> What will happen to our streams um, oh, with the wow. other other shiners and, yeah. and other fish? And then uh, stone rollers will come in that. We, we looked at the other horny head, right? Yeah. Um, so the stone rollers will come in and uh, use that as well. So it's, it's a neat, neat thing to see. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're really brave in the springtime when it's cold out, go get uh, goggles and, and a snorkel and go check it out because it is something out of this world to wow. see. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. It was looking at me through the bag. Yeah. <laughs> it it, it kind of looks like a frog. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you look straight on. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I didn't know it was a fish, yeah. I think that's a frog yeah. face in there. Yeah, right and he does, I don't know if you want to pass around or if you want to look at it, but yeah. you can see those tubercles on its on its forehead almost. Do you see those bumps? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly yeah. what my son caught yeah. that one. Yeah, and you can, you can catch him, yeah. but you can catch him on like a stone roller or something. Or not, so, well, no. It was Excuse a crawfish. me, a roost. Rooster tail, rooster yeah. Rooster tail. It was a yeah. little crawfish bait. They'll, yes, yeah. yes. They'll go after that. They caught like it on, yeah. Trout or anything. That's else cool. Though. So, um, what else? Ooh, I did want to show you guys some 
So those are some some of our bigger fish, right? Uh -huh. Let me see if I can find these smaller fish in here because they're beautiful. So, um, oh yeah, these guys. My pants are be. I wet. remember it just because you <laughs> taught me earlier. <laughs> okay, Matt. That's right. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> The red line daughter. That's right. Do so you have a male and a female? I ooh, and those might the most males. those might both be males. Okay. So, um, and they're hiding. They like to hide in the corners of the mm -hmm. bag. So, um, but Beautiful. if you can see, I'll try not to get in the way of the camera. But you can see this is the red line darter, um, and you can see that red line on the top of their fins, oh, um, yeah. and that's. That's probably why they're named. So uh, the female of this looks very similar, but it doesn't have the red lines on mm -hmm. it, basically. <laughs> cool. So. Yeah, those are pretty. So is it similar to birds? You know, in nature, um, the male bird is more bright, brightly colored and showy. The female is usually drab for camouflage. Yeah. Is it similar in the yeah. fish world? Yeah. Yes. Very similar. For? For certain species. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do a lot of them only get those colors during the breeding season, yeah. too? Yeah. And sometimes they'll keep them... Um, Throughout the year, oh, I don't yeah. know. Kind of just depends. I'm not really sure. So the Tennessee shiner you told us about earlier that turns orange, that's a breeding yes, coloration. For sure. Mm. For okay. sure. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. And then you saw it, it was complete it was that silver little mm -hmm. fish yeah. earlier. So it loses all that. Let's see what else. Ooh. Fishing in a bucket. I know. Right. <laughs> I still probably couldn't catch one. No, that's why I'm over here. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So in Tennessee, we are um very fortunate because we have one of the highest um, number of species diversity makes right, yeah. is really awesome but it also makes my job very difficult <laughs> <laughs> sure. to yeah. ID everything we have do you know how many different species of fish we have oh man I've heard but I don't remember okay 300 yeah. something yeah over 300 okay. different species of fish wow. which is pretty crazy to think about um, so when we have that because our state's really long right mm. so we have mountains right. right we have brook trout that we can go fish for it's our native trout which is mm -hmm. really cool our state um and then up in the mountains and then we go all the way down into the mississippi and we've got the cumberland plateau with some topography and all different types of um habitats there yeah it's really neat. pretty awesome in it um okay so this is one of my favorite favorite fish and i can pull this guy out of the water and he sits on my hand oh wow yeah. which is neat kind of like the uh what was the other, do you guys remember the other fish that horny head no. Is no, that on my no. hand? Oh, shoot. <laughs> one of the stone rollers? <laughs> that one kind of does. No. Um, it was the northern hog sucker. Cause hog it was sucker, a, yes. It ate stuff off the bottom. Right, so right. this guy is cool. I like how she's kind of playing with Like we're the kids in the class yeah. trying to figure out. Do you remember what <laughs> I said? <laughs> <laughs> so, and I don't know if the camera can see, but this guy, he does not eat uh, well, he doesn't eat like insects and stuff. Well, he might as a small guy, but um, I don't know if you saw how big his mouth is. Yeah, it opens up really big. It opens big. up really, really big. And so he's really cool because he sits on the bottom of the stream. You can see he actually doesn't have an air bladder like other fish do okay, to regulate yeah. in the lakes and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and his eyes are on top of his head. So he's always looking for stuff that he can eat. And he's got that big old mouth. You can almost stick your finger in its mouth. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. he can eat anything that'll fit in his mouth. And so he's a sculpin. Banded sculpin. Sculpin. Yeah. They're usually yeah. pretty identifiable, those big bands on them when you yeah. look down in a creek and mm -hmm. you can see them yeah. pretty yeah. quickly. At least yeah. I can. And those yeah. colors are really good camouflagers. Yeah. If I was, you know, yes. I was thinking, man, it could sit there and hide yeah. and catch its prey or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's really important. A lot of these fish, I mean, I talked about the rock bass, how mm -hmm. those are, those if once they're really big, they're indicators of good water quality. Um, uh, the sculpin as well, and a lot of these other fish, um, the, that rock, or excuse me, the river chub that's licking for certain size rocks mm -hmm. in the streams to keep our, our waters, um, you know, uh, healthy. And so a lot of times, the, or the biggest pollution, it, pollutant in um, the East Coast, I, I believe, is siltation which is kind of crazy. You'd think it'd be like uh, something yeah. else other than mm -hmm. other than soil. Right, right. <laughs> we'll talk about siltation and how it ends up in yeah. the waters, yeah. what contributes to that. Yeah, yeah. So there's all different things, right? You know, um, you can be building a whole bunch of houses and not put up silt fences, and it rains, and it rains forever here, right? Mm -hmm. It's always raining compared to where I lived in Arizona, <laughs> it seems like. <laughs> um, so that rain can really wash any any time you disturb the natural ecosystem, the rain can wash in silt. Um, and uh, we want to make sure that we're not 
having that happen. So by putting up silt fences or, or building in, in ways and recreating in ways that don't cause this type of siltation is really important for our stream, mm. our stream fishes that you guys get to see today. Yeah. Um, another, yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> That's good. Well, is there, are there any more critters in there or we want to move on to something else? Ooh. Oh, uh, I mean, there's more. I just, the telescope uh, shiner. Oh, yeah. I remembered him. Let's see if I can find one oh, of those. Oh, you remembered. Okay. Let's see. Okay. So, oh, I think this is one. So, telescope shiner. It's kind of Another. hard to tell, isn't it? When oh, you get to the real small and yes. the real similar. Yes. Yeah. They're, uh, they all look similar. Um, uh, shiners are notorious for being really hard to tell the difference. Sometimes... The people who are really good at IDing shiners will be like, you know, it just looks like it has a frowny face. Or <laughs> it looks mad. And I'm like, okay. okay. Uh, yeah. It looks like a gold. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a telescope shiner. It's silvery fish. Um, we call this, the way I remember this one is it has a really big eye and its scales are supposed to be out of focus. The back edges of its scales. So hmm. we call it telescopus out of focus. So fun. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> um, but I don't know. Uh, so it's silvery fish. Yeah. Important. You'll find them in pools. So when you see, sometimes you'll see schools of little white shiny fish in pools. That those are a lot of times your shiners, and a lot of times um, telescope shiners. Okay. What about the war paint? Oh yeah. Shiner. Okay. Let me see if I can get this one. I wonder if I can get it in the viewing jar here. We'll see how that goes. And kaploop. What? Maybe. <laughs> Catch it. I'm not going in. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Try one more time. Okay, so this one uh, is called the War Paint Shiner. Oops. Um, and awesome. yeah, they're really fun. pretty when they're really colored up. This guy isn't really colored up, but they'll have some what um, you know they call war paint from I don't know football players put that war paint on them oh, or, yeah. or Native Americans would put that war paint on them. Um, uh, so he's got some orange lines and some black lines on his face. Hmm. So, um, just wanting to swim up out of there. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll pull him out. He's probably. I don't know if he likes it in there. Sometimes they fish do well in there. Sometimes they don't. So, um, but yeah, that's a war paint shiner. They have white on the on the on their, uh, or there's actually no pigment on the on their bottom mm -hmm. fin right there. Um, that's cool. You can yeah. catch those. They'll get big enough to catch. I've caught them um, on, again, a rooster tail when I'm trying to fish for other <laughs> other stuff. Yeah. How many times have you caught something and been like, what in the world is that? You know, mm -hmm. and turned it loose. <laughs> or you see a bird while you're hunting and you don't know what it is. You hear one. It's right. fantastic to have this knowledge so you can enjoy yeah. nature, not only consumptively, but just to appreciate the aesthetic value mm -hmm. that it provides as well. Yeah. It, those, especially those guys that, and gals that can just rattle off a bird name when they hear it, uh, something tweet in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how in the world? It's impressive. And they got these little funny names they remember it by. It does help. Yeah. Yeah. Like my telescope is out of focus. <laughs> That's not the actual Latin name. <laughs> no. Yes and no, right. No, okay. It's not. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> well, I was hoping it was. You've mentioned um, rooster tail a couple times. It's yeah. like, I, I don't know. I you can catch anything on a rooster tail. Mm -hmm. It seems like the fish or the, the bait that catches all fish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say throughout history, there's probably been more fish caught on a rooster tail than any other thing out there. And I other guess than live bait. You know, it's really you call, that's really an inline spinner, right? Yeah. But me, rooster tail yeah. is kind of one of the brands. But that's yeah. everybody's yeah, rooster spinners. tail. Yeah. yeah, like chapstick. You know, it's lip balm, but <laughs> yeah. chapstick's a brand. Right? Everybody calls it chapstick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rooster tail. Oh, Let's see inline if spinner. If you if you just said that, people would laugh. You know, yeah. they wouldn't know what you're talking about. If you use an inline spinner, <laughs> no, no, it's a rooster tail. <laughs> You got another one? I have another one. We'll see how he does in here. He does not like being in the bag, but um, this one is a greenside darter, and it's a big, you guys remember, do you guys remember the other darter species that I pulled out earlier? The red line. Yes. So this it's similar. It's another darter. Okay. This one's greenside, and he'll turn a little bit more green um, at, in during spawning colors. Yeah, he doesn't like being in the bag. He wants to be in the corner of That's it. That's cool. Um, but these guys will get... A bit bigger, so they'll, they're they mm -hmm. one of the bigger darter species. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of cool. And these guys are kin to, 
whatever you want to hear. Yeah, good old East Tennessee up, term. I'm picking up the, su- yeah, the yep. Tennessee ter- terms. But, um, His cousin. Is. Yeah. Do you remember, Matt, what they're kin to? The snail daughter. <laughs> oh, sure? yeah. Oh, we, we just had the celebration. Yeah, that's, oh, gosh, yes. Do you want to talk about that quickly? About yeah. Snail daughter and okay. that whole fill us in. Okay. That it's, yeah, so it's not my story to tell. Um, but recently, we just, we as in, um, fisheries managers across you know the Mm -hmm. southeast um just were able to get the snail darter um downlisted off of the threatened and endangered species list which is like monument career Mm -hmm. monumental thing what you all work for for so long you know yeah things like that yeah so um again i wasn't part of it i've come in and just been able to work with people who have done all the work to do that Mm -hmm. um so it's neat for me to see it but the um, infamous little fish that stopped the construction of the teleco mm -hmm. dam what Mm -hmm. back in the late 70s i'm guessing yeah Mm -hmm. so that's how controversial and important it is so yeah see it delisted that just doesn't happen a lot what delisting something does it yeah, no no it does not um i think it's one of the uh, no i don't want to be quoted <laughs> <Just a handful. laughs> because i'm not sure but um i think it was one of the first to be de- delisted mm-hmm. um on the east coast so it's but you were big deal trying to go perch family <laughs> yes. with that and i went yes. down the snail dart <laughs> yeah route, which is so. which is something <laughs> to celebrate like it's a big 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 deal um uh for the snail darter recovery um yeah but those darters are kin to perches like walleye sauger they if you guys see the little they're little right but they're like if you think big Elongated. picture yeah that's like a walleye or something like yeah. that so mm. it's kind of cool they're all in the same same they're kin i guess who would have thunk it. it yeah yeah that's yeah. Pretty, pretty neat and and they did a little ceremony and that was held here in tennessee when they yes yeah uh, the, the seven the islands snail, uh, yeah park. seven islands burden yeah. state park it was beautiful it was dr really etnire neat. was there the yes did he describe the snail order he just discovered that it was present there um, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure. He was at least responsible for yeah. discovering that it was present there. Mm-hmm. And then he's found other populations in other places. So he's yeah. been he, monumental in the recovery of that fish. Yeah. He's cool. He's monumental in fish bio, fish taxonomy. I mean, he's wrote, he written the book. the book along with mm-hmm. Wayne Starnes on, yeah, the fishes of Tennessee college. book. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fishes of Tennessee, about yeah. that thick and full of. <laughs> yeah. Full of Latin great knowledge. Terms, yeah, yeah <laughs> that I can't pronounce. We're going to run out of time if we don't talk about the. Yeah, winter trout is coming up uh, November 29th through March 10th, 2023. So there's a, a big range of, of winter trout fishing time. Do you want to talk a little bit about that before we run out of time? Sure. Because we're going to. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've got two winter trout stockings in East uh, Region 4, Maryville, um, and the Fountain City Lake. So Those have become popular areas for people yes. to fish, yeah. Yes, yes. So go out and try try your luck at some of those fish. Yeah. So. Uh, the, the full winter trout schedule is going to be on our website if it's not already, uh, and you can you can see where the stockings are going to happen. Uh, Sally's got the inside, inside scoop there with the list for this year, uh, and it will be coming out soon. So if you want to chase winter trout, uh, yeah. there's still a seven fish limit, right? And they encourage you to keep them. Uh, I think that's true. Five. I think we five? reduced it to five. Five, okay. Yeah. And Don't then quote catfish. me. Look at your fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catfish is also five. We do stock catfish in those okay. lakes as well. So they actually awesome. just, ours got an extra stocking this past month. So how do you catch, catfish. how do you catch the catfish? What's Ooh. your method? Oh, uh, you can li- use chicken livers or anything kind of stinky. Yeah. And then what about the trout in these yeah. community fisheries? How do you recommend they catch the trout? Ooh. It's an inline spinner. Ooh, yeah, a rooster tail. Hello. <laughs> what? Uh, what? Trout magnet, my boss will. Yeah. He, trout magnet. Yeah. He loves the trout magnet. Okay. Yeah. That's a good one. Any color. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Either sit it on the bottom or wiggle it. You know, just do whatever. Whatever the fish want that day. So. Yep. All right. So bundle up and go do some winter trout fishing. What do you say? Yeah. All right. Well, Sally, it's been fun. Appreciate you. Uh, being here with us and allowing us to be with you it's pretty cool to have these fish to look at yeah, yeah. we'll have to get All you out on the stream one day let's do it let's yeah. do this on the stream <laughs> <laughs> alright well this is Tennessee Wildcast we'll see you next time thanks for tuning in stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org and follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram hey it's all about Tennessee wildlife 
It's what we do. 